Coursera. Bienvenidos a Just Kidding Around. Edición especial para niños de Missouri Outdoors. Okay, sorry, my Spanish isn't very good. and I took French in high school and that's not much better. But the reason for the Espanol is to get you ready for a little trip we're gonna take south of the border later in the program. The subject of today's show is animal migration and we'll be showcasing species that live here in Missouri, right here in your own backyard. Like this monarch butterfly, he might be heading to the highlands of central Mexico right now. Some of the colorful songbirds you see in Missouri's forests during the summer months are spending their winters in Central or South America. And of course, those bees of geese overhead are coming straight from the tundra of the Canadian Arctic. Wildlife is on the move, and they don't recognize the lines we draw on a map. I mean, what an amazing story. How do these animals know where to go and when to go? Animal migration has been studied by scientists worldwide, and they still don't have all the answers. It's wildlife without borders. Monarch butterflies, they're big, they're beautiful, they're all over the Missouri countryside. But these same butterflies are called Mariposa monarca, south of the border. Incredibly, all of the monarch butterflies in the eastern and central United States travel to Mexico in the fall. They spend the winter together in a few small patches of pine forest. In the spring, they move north again, laying their eggs on milkweed plants as they move north. These eggs grow into caterpillars, pupate into butterflies, and continue north. Then in the fall, the butterflies born on the journey head back to the same spots in Mexico, though they've never been there before. Let's join this amazing journey at the Shaw Nature Reserve near St. Louis. Our tour guides, a group of Missouri fifth graders. There's nothing like being out in the prairie with kids catching butterflies. There's no prettier sight. Uh, tall plants, wildflowers, kids running with nets through the prairie, and they're absolutely elated when they come back to our tagging station saying, I got one, I got one. That's ready to tag them? Yes. Go. All three of you have one? Fantastic. Gerald Axelbaum and Kathy Lewis are fifth grade teachers at the college school in St. Louis. They've developed a monarch butterfly theme for their class. It's uh, kind of an amazing story. It started 12 years ago. I, uh, one summer, had seen a little blurb in a science uh, newsletter that was put out by Monarch Watch. Chip Taylor had put in a note saying he was looking for schools or teachers that wanted to tag butterflies the coming fall to track the monarch's migration to Mexico. We made our own butterfly nets and we went and tried to catch butterflies and tag them and just saw how much fun it was for the kids to chase after the butterflies. When we did catch them, they, they learned a lot about them. And the goal became to form a connection for children with nature. Very good, Red in the shed. The fact that monarch butterflies moved south every fall was common knowledge. The mystery was where they were going. It wasn't until the mid-1970s that the answer became stunningly clear. Hundreds of millions of monarchs were discovered overwintering in a few patches of forest in central Mexico. The question of how the monarchs accomplished this amazing feat is still something of a mystery, and something the fifth grade at the college school is trying to answer. And here we've got monarchs migrating from all across North America. How far are they migrating? Peter? 2,000 miles. 2,000 miles they migrate. And what area are they going to? This little spot down here in Mexico <clears throat> that is how big miles? Uh, 60 square miles. 60 square miles. The town of Anconguello in the central highlands of Mexico is the epicenter of the monarch sanctuaries. And among the millions of butterflies that come every winter, some carry a signature from Missouri. They put tags on butterflies in the United States and Canada to see how many of them arrive here. Then 
We collect them here, and the biologists and the scientists come to see how many of the tagged butterflies are right. You know, we tag the butterflies at Shaw Nature Reserve here in Missouri, and then the butterflies migrate south. And um, it is neat to find out they've, they've arrived there, and when we're lucky enough that one of our tags are recovered. Finally, I am up. Okay, Jake just put a tag on this butterfly. The tag says Monarch Watch on and has a number for identification. And um, if this monarch makes it to Mexico, we'll be able to know that it's one that we tagged in St. Louis. It's Shaw Nature Reserve. So it's just great. It's a, yeah, it's a way to um, know that they've made it from here to there. So we're all going to Mexico? Just see them, yeah. yes. <laughs> the fifth grade is a great age to teach, yes. The kids are curious, and um, they just are curious about everything. So you can just really get them involved in most any topic because they have the skills to really pursue it on their own. Journey North has organized people both in Canada and in the United States to draw butterflies like you're doing to send them to Mexico so that the butterflies that you're drawing will spend the winter in Mexico with the kids in Mexico and they'll read your messages that you've written on the butterflies. They'll see what you've drawn and then they'll write you a message and then send them back in the spring when the monarchs will be migrating north. For the kids, it's an interdisciplinary journey through math, science, and art, all while exploring one of the great wonders of nature. I love teaching students and showing them the magic of the world and just amazing sights in the world. I have a lot of curiosity, and I guess I share that with my students because I'm always amazed at the things that we can see outside. Butterflies aren't the only creatures on the move. Some species of songbirds call Missouri home in the summer months, but in the winter, they move down south. Nicaragua, Honduras, Venezuela, these birds get around. They're called neotropical migrants. Let's look in on a group of students at the Missouri Forest Ecosystem Project near Ellington as they try to unravel bits of this migratory mystery. In order to study the effects of various management practices on the forest ecosystem, the Missouri Department of Conservation has launched a visionary research project that will extend well into the century. The Missouri Forest Ecosystem Project, called MOFEP, is looking at a wide variety of components of the forest ecosystem. Songbirds, insects, vegetation, reptiles and amphibians, soil productivity, and more. All designed for the long term, and all with an eye to finally and definitively answer the question, what's best for our forests? The foot soldiers of this mammoth effort are young interns, starting their careers in field biology on a groundbreaking project of monumental scope. And if you're on the bird crew, the day begins very early. I'm really excited about working on this project. As far as I know, it's the only one of its kind that's going on in the country. It's a huge project, so I mean, it, it means a lot to, to as far as what's going on, as far as logging and all that, determining whether or not it's really affecting the ecosystem here. It's a really big deal. That's pretty cool, you know, you're part of something bigger than just the summer and gives you a good experience. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. And I, I, I mean, this is my first field job. So I'm actually, you know, seeing how it is, and I really like it, you know, it's great. We've got mist nets, I guess they're about 35, 36 feet wide, and they're essentially just nylon nets that are meant to trap the birds. They're thin enough that the birds aren't going to be able to see them particularly well. Oh, it's a little warbler. Hello, baby. How you doing, huh? Entangled? Oh, that was too easy, almost. All right, this right here is a hooded warbler. It's a pretty little bird. I uh, don't really know 
If it's a female or a hatch here right now, I can't tell. Here we go. Got it. All right. Does he show any signs of molting? Body molt. Paul Pornalusi is one of three principal investigators on the MOFEP bird project. He has 11 years of experience with MOFEP interns. It's his job to direct the field staff and to make sure that the data collected will be useful for generations to come. So when they come back for their second breeding season, they'll have round The bird project is designed in uh, looking at the impacts of forestry on the birds. Uh, the overall MOFET project is interested in, in looking at how two types of forestry affect the ecosystem. And so we're interested in seeing how the large uh, clear cuts compared to the small group selection cuts in terms of affecting the abundance of birds and especially the reproductive success of the birds. One of the major thrusts of the bird project has been research into neotropical migrants. Neotropical migrants are birds that winter in Central and South America and spend their summers here in North America. And summer is the breeding season for these birds, so the condition of the forest habitat they live in is critical to their survival. There has been some concern about the populations of neotropical migrants as a group. Uh, there was some evidence in the 80s and early 90s that these birds as a group were declining. And so it was, the question was, were they declining because of something that was happening on their wintering grounds, because of tropical deforestation, or was it because of impacts on the breeding grounds? And in fact, some of those declines may have been the result of a long-term drought in the 80s. We've been working now for 11 years, and on the bird project alone, we've had over 250 interns over those years. This is very physical and hard work, and uh, it, it takes young people to be able to do it, to get up early in the morning, and, uh, and they do it with enthusiasm. And it, it's, it's very rewarding to me because on multiple occasions, I hear students say, you know, this is great, this is the best job I've ever had. I go hike in the woods all day long and, and count birds and listen to birds and so they really do enjoy it. And eventually, over the course of a century, the collected data will help answer the question, what is best for our forests? One of the world's leading experts on monarch migration calls the Midwest home. Chip Taylor started the Monarch Watch Organization to help unlock some of the mysteries of this mysterious butterfly. These are the guys keeping track of all of the butterflies the St. Louis fifth graders tagged. And they're keeping track of hundreds of other groups just like them all around the country. It's a huge job, but the data they collect provides valuable information to scientists studying the monarch migration. Every summer, Chip and his crew travel to Powell Gardens near Kansas City to celebrate the Festival of Butterflies. It's sort of a family affair. Today we're in our uh, second weekend of our Butterfly Festival. Uh, there's lots of kids out here and they can, uh, and adults as well, and butterflies are definitely the, the easiest insect to introduce kids to. You get a lot of kids who are just afraid of insects. Um, you show them that the butterflies are one of those insects and that they are, you know, they don't bite, they don't sting, and, and they start to learn that not everything that's an insect is bad. <laughs> Have you seen a lot of butterflies today? One of the featured attractions at the Powell Gardens Festival of Butterflies is a presentation by the Monarch Watch Organization. Monarch Watch administers the tagging program for monarchs throughout the United States, including those tagged by the St. Louis fifth graders. It's a rigorous scientific exercise that gathers real data on the monarch's migration. But there's still room for education, outreach, and just plain fun. <laughs> Chip Taylor is the founder of Monarch Watch. Monarch Watch is an outreach organization that we established in 1992. We have three foci for Monarch Watch activities. We're 
We're interested in using monarch butterflies to improve science education in primary and secondary schools. But another thing that we do is, is study the migration. So there's a research component. So we have up to 100,000 people a year participate in the tagging program. And we've learned a lot. I mean, there are a lot of things we've learned about this migration with this tagging program. And then the third thing that we do is conservation because we're very interested in conserving this phenomenon. We're very interested in conserving the monarch population and it's very much threatened. It's threatened by habitat loss here in the United States and, and Canada and it's threatened by habitat loss down in Mexico. So we're very interested in promoting monarch conservation and to this end we're encouraging people to grow milkweed wherever they possibly can. And, uh, there are very few conservation efforts where the average citizen can really get involved and this is one of them. Well, we've introduced a lot of people to monarch butterflies. It's been an interesting experience in that regard because one of the feedbacks we've gotten fairly consistently about our program is the thank you. The thank you from people that have been introduced to this larger phenomena, this phenomena of the migration. It just puts a lot of things in perspective. What do you think of when you hear the word migration? I know what I think of, geese. We're all aware of the waterfowl migration that passes overhead every spring and fall. Wildlife researchers have taken to the air to study this amazing phenomenon. When you see the birds, and especially if you're flying low to get an idea of what types of birds are around, it really is a spectacle. And let's just do one more pass real low. I wanted to get the species composition. I saw a fair number of mallards, but it didn't get a real good look. You'll have birds flying by, zipping by, you know, on all sides of the plane, so you just feel like you're surrounded by, by ducks and geese when you're in the middle of that. Fall waterfowl migration is one of Missouri's most spectacular natural events. Well, here, Biologist Andy Radke and pilot well, Chet cool. Hartley get the privilege of seeing this phenomenon from a unique aerial perspective during the Conservation Department's annual waterfowl survey. And then we'll go on over to Swan Lake and Fountain Grove and, and see what's going on up that way as well. Normally, we have a route that we fly that's pretty routine. We go in at 400 to 500 foot of altitude and we do our aerial photos. They kind of keep a running record of that. Then after that, we drop down and we get down about a, somewhere around 75 to 100 feet and we literally count the number of animals that we see, in this case, duck. Yeah, there's really two primary purposes. The one is to really see the timing of when ducks and geese come into Missouri. We use that information for setting hunting regulations and also just knowing in general the chronology of when ducks and geese arrive. The other major reason we do the surveys is to really monitor the habitat conditions in Missouri. We even restored you know, lots of wetlands in the last 10 or 20 years. And so we want to find out where ducks and geese are using wetlands and what types of wetlands they're using. The information gained on the aerial survey helps to better manage Missouri's wetlands. Husband and wife duck hunting team, Eric and Renee Martin, appreciate the results. You know, we spend a lot of time just the two of us in our duck boat or in a blind or, you know, it's just one more thing that we can share together. It's about who we are. I've grown up in the outdoors my whole life. I've, you know, learned how to fish when I was a little kid. I've been hunting since I was 11. Um, and it's just, it's a part of my personality. And, um, and it's great when you can share it with other people and similar interests. A lot of these public hunting areas that we have now are really doing their job to hold a lot of birds while they're migrating. So I think the numbers are just going to continue to go up. I see a bright future for ducks. Let's go. Ooh, nice shot! For Eric and Renee Martin, duck hunting is more than a weekend hobby. It's a lifestyle, a passion, and it's giving them a lifetime of memories. And in the skies above Missouri's wetlands, biologists are working together with skilled pilots to assess the effectiveness of these important ecosystems, essential parts of Missouri's natural heritage. In the process, they're getting a unique look at one of the things that makes Missouri special, the fall migration. What would happen if you took all of the monarch butterflies in the east and central parts of the United States, gathered them together, and put them in a small patch of pine forest? Let's follow the migration south of the border. Mm -hmm. 
For a kid, school is school all over the world. There are math lessons. Dos por nueve. Science lessons. And occasionally, the all-important recess. But in the Mexican state of Michoacan, near the town of Anconguello, something special happens every fall. The monarch butterflies return from the north, and Hernán Medino Nieto returns as well, carrying the symbolic butterflies. Bueno, para mí, yo soy el coordinador por hace hace diez años. I have been the coordinator for the Journey North program for ten years. Simboliza mariposas de papel. This is the program that distributes the symbolic paper butterflies. I work with the children of Ancangueo. It is a pleasure to work here with them and be part of this program, the Journey North. The Journey North is a program that organizes schools in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico to exchange symbolic butterflies, to emphasize the importance of the migration and the importance of three nations working together toward the preservation of the monarch butterfly. The result? Students from Missouri and students in Mexico communicating with each other regarding monarch conservation. Through the program, The Journey North, we have made many friends. The people of Ancangueo invite all of the people of Missouri to come and see the monarchs. It is something very beautiful. sanctuaries have been declared biosphere reserves by the government of Mexico. They're considered so significant worldwide that they've been designated World Heritage Sites by the United Nations. However, there are problems for the monarchs throughout the migration. Illegal logging in the forests of Mexico continues to reduce the size of the sanctuaries. In the United States, increased development and agricultural practices have reduced the milkweed plant, essential food for monarch larvae. Yet even with these looming concerns, a visit to the monarch sanctuaries is an awe-inspiring experience, one of the most spectacular natural events on Earth. American biologist Jessica Wheeler and Don Reese are teaming up with Mexican biologist Eligio Garcia Serrano to define the exact size of the colonies using GPS okay. technologies. They're yep. getting a special tour of the El Rosario Sanctuary near Ancangueo in the process. Eligio is the um, fellow that we're working with and he is recording a lot of different things. Um, he does transects and then he'll also use the GPS to record the size of the butterfly colonies and therefore be able to track change over time. It's a vacation for us as biologists to come down and see the butterflies and help people um, record really important biological information. I have been working with different institutions in the Monarch Butterfly Reserve for about 14 years. I really like biology and nature and the work of conserving the forest where the butterflies live. It was my first job and I think it will be my last. an incredible adventure. Butterflies heading to Mexico, Ozark songbirds in Nicaragua, Canadian geese right here in Missouri. 
The phenomenon of animal migration is simply awe-inspiring. The big lesson here? People around the world need to work with one another to preserve and protect our natural heritage. We're all in this together.